Well, good afternoon, church family. All right. I got a question for you. How are you making it uh, through this new normal that, quite honestly, well, it isn't normal at all? Uh, well, as I think about uh, persevering and keeping on keeping on in, in the midst of circumstances that are, are difficult and unexpected, one verse uh, specifically comes to mind. Uh, what does it look like uh, to persevere, or uh, another way to describe perseverance is keeping on, keeping on, uh, in the midst of uh, some difficult and unusual circumstances? And, and the verse that comes to mind is Romans 12, 12. Uh, hear these words. This is the English Standard Version. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. I actually first memorized that verse in the New International Version, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. We want to know how to persevere in a difficult time. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Well, uh, this afternoon I just have a couple of reflections for you, some updates, some things I really want to uh, share with you that I'm actually pretty excited about. Um, uh, obviously, I think most of us are aware that this week is the time of year that we reflect in a very special way on the road leading up to the cross and the cross itself. Uh, this is the week that is sometimes referred to as Passion Week, uh, the week that began with the shouts of Hosanna, an expression of praise meaning save, Hos joyful shouts of Hosanna as Jesus rode into Jerusalem riding on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Uh, but then the week didn't stay with the events of Palm Sunday and the triumphal entry. Oh no, the, the events uh, led through the shouts of a crowd saying, crucify, crucify, and then up to uh, the cross. And, and we reflect on that in a very special way on Good Friday as we reflect on uh, Christ's death as our substitute on the cross. But of course, the cross is not the end of the story either. Uh, on the first day of the week, the next Sunday, the Lord's Day, Gloriously, the tomb was empty, the glory of the resurrection. Uh, and this week, uh, we reflect very uh, specifically, though we really ought to reflect on it at all times, on uh, the road leading up to the cross, the cross itself, and then ultimately the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and I just want uh, to remind all of us of something that I'm sure we already know, uh, but the cross and the resurrection, the death and and, and glorious resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the absolute center of everything. And with that in mind, I want to introduce something that we want to do here at Arthur E. Free Church uh, this, uh, this, uh, at this time, this Resurrection Sunday. Uh, we have these uh, posters, they're going to look like this, and they say, We have hope, He is risen. And we have a couple different versions. This is one that's colored. And kids, this is one that's not colored. We're actually asking you kids that as we, uh, we're going to send these out in an email. And we're asking that if you uh, are willing to color, we'd really prefer them uh, to be individually decorated. But we have hope he is risen. And we're going to email these, uh, these posters uh, to everyone in our church family. And we're asking you to do a couple of things. Kids, we're asking you to color it in. And uh, adults, if you don't want to color it in and you want to print the one with color, that's okay. And then we're asking you to gather together as a family and uh, take a picture uh, with yourself, with this picture that says, We have hope, he is risen, and then email it to the church office. And uh, if you could do that before Saturday at noon, a picture with your family, with this poster, We have hope, he is risen. Uh, email it to the church office before Saturday noon, and then we are hoping to make a Facebook album where we have the opportunity to see everybody's faces. Uh, we really do miss your faces, and we long for the time when we can be together again. Uh, so we're asking you, uh, if, if you're willing to do that, to do that. If you'd like to participate, but you don't have internet connection, an internet connection, or you have the, uh, don't have the ability to send a picture, uh, spread the word to those who don't have that, and we're willing to send somebody to uh, their home and to appropriately social distance. Uh, maybe you could meet us on the porch. We could be standing out front and, and take a picture of you so that you could send those greetings that way. Now, as we were thinking about the, the message of Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, and we came up with that phrase, we have hope, he is risen, and that's based in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Hear these words. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again uh, to a living hope. Did you catch that phrase? Living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. So again, if you could uh, participate in that, and again, send those pictures uh, to us by Saturday noon, and then also take that poster and post it in a, maybe the front window of your house or a window of your car where it's parked or something, somewhere where others can see it. Because we want the glorious message of hope of living hope. We have hope, he is risen, and to be spread throughout our community. And if you send us a picture, we'll just, uh, uh, by way of uh, disclosure, we'll just assume uh, that that's permission to go ahead and then uh, post that on the, in the Facebook album as we greet one another that way. We also wanted to let you know that we're planning a very special thing for Good Friday. Uh, obviously, all our plans are Lord willing, uh, but we'll be releasing a video with some music, a brief message, and also I will be talking us through how to celebrate communion or the Lord's Supper uh, together as families in our home during that video. Uh, so be watching for a video to be released on Good Friday so that Friday evening you can gather with your family, sing some songs reflecting on the cross, then uh, listen to a brief reflection message just focusing on the heart of the cross, on Christ's death as our substitute. And, and then, if you'd like, uh, th that reflection will also guide you through uh, how to celebrate the Lord's Supper together as families uh, in, in each of uh, your homes. Uh, what better way to, you know, it's just such a, such a uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper of communion is such a special way to reflect on the message of the cross because it was on the cross that Christ's body was broken and his blood shed so that we can be forgiven. On the cross, he suffered in our place. His body was broken and his blood was shed as our substitute. Uh, so again, uh, be watching for that video on Good Friday. Uh, we're excited about that. Uh, and we're excited to uh, be able again to uh, worship together as a church family, albeit in a scattered way as we reflect on the cross. And then uh, we're planning to pause our current series. Many of you know uh, that we are in the middle of a series now uh, that has just been uh, really a blessing, I, I think, to many of us. I know to me, in, in preparation, uh, we're calling it Philippians, Finding and Sustaining Real Joy. And don't, friends, we need joy in these times. Joy that is independent of the circumstances. But we're going to pause our, our series on Philippians for one week. And this Sunday, Easter Sunday, or better, Resurrection Sunday, we're planning uh, to look at the message of the cross and ultimately the resurrection uh, through the lens of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I just want to call our attention to a couple of verses in 1 Corinthians 15. This is 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes, For I delivered to you as of first importance uh, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. What is of first importance? That Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he was raised. Uh, so again, uh, this Sunday we're planning to gaze with wonder on the cross and the resurrection uh, through looking at those words in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, church family, we know that this is a unique time. We know that uh, the word unprecedented is appropriate. Uh, we know that uh, uh, this is difficult for many people. And many people, are, we're all wondering and longing for the chance to be back uh, together, worshiping together under the same roof, seeing one another face to face. Uh, but thank you so much uh, for being flexible. Thank you for touching base with each other. The calls and the texts are wonderful. Keep it up. Keep loving and caring for one another in creative ways. And we are excited as a church family to find ways to celebrate the hope. No, not just the hope. Actually, let's describe it with that word in 1 Peter. The living hope that we have because of Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection. Because of the cross and under the empty tomb, we celebrate living hope. Thank you so much.